17 canals that link it up and discharge to that place. Wow. Because along that axis, you don't have body, bodies of water. Yeah. So th we have six systems like that. That's the, so when he says we have only six canals in Lagos, I laugh. <laughs> because think about it. In terms of the environment, it's not a question of even the canals. So today, in today's world, it's mitigation and remediation. So we must what find it. So basically, you must change our, we must change our lifestyles. Okay. Think about it. California had flood. 16 people died. They never had flood before. 16 people died in the state of California. That's one of the most advanced countries in the world. Mm -hmm. In Germany, they had flood that killed 180 people, the size of Belgium. So we must look around us. So when the Atlantic Ocean, when there is a problem in the UK, is melting, it's coming here. Yeah. We are part of it. Mm. So we must say, how do we change our lifestyles? And those are, so a legal state has a, a department that is called resilience department. If there is a major shock around the world, how do we survive? Mm. What do we do? So buying fire trucks, buying all these things, is not accidental. Okay. We are preparing that in case there is a problem. These are the things we need, and we prepare, we prepare it. So when people talk that, not, they don't understand governance. I'm sorry. And you, 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 look, if you want the MD of a bank, or you have a real estate company, and you have a real estate company, yes. Yes. the person managing them will understand real estate. It, yes. If not, it will fail. Mm. Because they are, so that's the bottom line. The challenge, the tragedy in our country is that we give our society to people who have no understanding. Mm. That is the tragedy. Meanwhile, you want to, so the MD of a bank in Nigeria mm. is a banker. Yeah. Economist, accountant, and the rest—they have the requisite knowledge. Knowing the CBA is not the same. I said this. I wanted to, you know, say, you know, you don't need, you don't yes. need <laughs> engineering knowledge for certain things. For instance, absolutely. In words, Eric Moore, as you're climbing the Igomo Bridge, you see the bars are already exposed. Yes. You know, the tar has left it. It's not as protective, uh, protected as it was by whatever they use, uh, the concrete, um, the bootimen mm. that they used to cover that area. Mm. The bars are already extending out. And you know, you'll be expecting that government will pass this road too. They'll see it. Mm. They'll see it. You don't need any knowledge. So when somebody comes out tomorrow and says that that place wasn't well done, mm. you know, it, it's public knowledge. Uh, well, so you, you are talking about management. So the, the, what we have, let me explain to you. What we have in Lagos is we have a team that their job is if a, 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 a pole is down, they should go and fix it. So that's why we tell even everybody in the executive council, when you are going home and you see something, you must send a, a picture to your colleague. They must know. Mm. There has to be a way for us to know that, oh, this is a challenge. This is a problem. This particular one has been forever. So, the, 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 no, so but you see, the too. problem is that it's a, it's where you are talking about, so let me tell you the geography of that place. When we were expanding Lagos Badagri, the Mazamaza Bridge, the Mazamaza Bridge, the Mazamaza Bridge is not just an ordinary bridge. That's why it was only a particular company, I don't need to mention, that, that was able to do it because of the water flow. I didn't even know it, but they were able to show us. And so part of the problem that you're talking about is because we build that bridge, mm -hmm. you can't expand it. Well, this is mm. the dry bridge I'm talking about, the Igomo one. Oh. In words, where the bars are now exposed. The Mazamaza Bridge is... Working fine, I use that. Because I know we fix that, uh, so we're no, the, yeah. the concrete, the grounds and everything. Okay, we we'll go and look at it. I'm Eric Moore. He was the common... So yeah. was that's another data. major issue that I, I feel we should address. Because while they are, the, the, the role of the citizenry in collating data yes. for the... For, because we don't expect you or the governor to be everywhere, but we expect there should be a channel where if we see something wrong, we can send that message and somebody can work on it, or at least somebody would respond. Yeah. Sometimes it is like, make me feel like you heard me, yes. like Nigerians Absolutely. Wants. Absolutely. So Absolutely. Ah, we, we, we saw that message. We saw that the Eric Moore Bridge is open. Don't worry. We would, well, we'll in a there. few weeks, we changes. would get to it, and it helps. BC has a question. Yes, sir. So I know that you are bidding for re-election. <laughs> <laughs> and the governor, Governor Babajide Sawolu. So tell us why you think Niger uh, Nigerians and Lagosians should give you another opportunity. What is that thing that you are going to be doing when you come back that you haven't done this time? Well, I thank you very much for that question. So, as you know, the needs of people will always be there. So, 
no government will be able to realistically finish. If not, there, is no, there will be no need for government <laughs> in the U.S. or so on. So because our needs are always dynamic and they are that such. So for example, let's look at each sector. So for example, in health, every bed that you provide in a maternal hospital, studies have shown that you save 10 lives. Every bed. But when I say bed, I don't just mean a bed, mm. meaning with the medical whatever. That's what started the idea of MCC's maternal child center that we are building. It started during BRF, we've expanded it. So our study shows that we need 18 in our state. I'm sorry, 16 in our state. We built 12. We are going ahead with the next four. We must finish that. We are building the largest pediatric hospital. Everybody in Lagos know that hospital in Lagos Island. We've heard about it. That's where the majority of the people in that were born. We are now building a seven-story hospital because it's, it's crowded. The doctors are there and the rest, but it's crowded. People are, so we are massive hospital. So we are expanding it. Now, that is in health. And across, if somebody came here and also said that, oh, he has traveled and there is no PAC in. Well, the truth is we have about 418 PACs in Lagos. However, only 67 are flagship. What does flagship mean? It means they open 24-7. So, for example, if you go to a Lhasa Maja, mm -hmm. it will open 24-7. If you open, it so, there are, so our challenge is how do we make all of them open 24-7? How? Now, it's a question of staff. It's a question of equipment and the rest. The challenge also is that, constitutionally, PAC is, this is local government. But the reality is, <laughs> I don't think they, they have the resources. Wow. And, it's, so, and we blame them. We blame them because, but think about it. The federal government has 54% of the resources, plus the, uh, what they call the, what is it, the, the environmental something, which is another 2%. That's 56%. State has 27 and local government has about 24. Now, when you share that 24% among 777, you, you can imagine. So in terms of quantum, they have. So have we must also look at how we distribute our resources. Mm. If you say these are the Closer to people. the people. Exactly. So, you know, we, we, so, but the challenge is we take it up with them to say, oh, look, let's also come together and do it. Now, the, the, the reality is all those 57 that are, it wasn't 57 where we came into government, mm -hmm. but we've gotten into that. So, for example, at Ajiro Mifelodu, one just became a flagship because yes. we've built it up. We've, uh, now, the question is that in certain areas, like VI, for example, like Ikoyi, for example, there are not many PACs there. Because, yeah, well, it is the majority of the people there will not even use, yeah. majority, yeah. not everybody. So, it's not as active. And what we've done in Lagos is that if a doctor resigns or leaves, because I know we've said about it or whatever, Jack Ma, the, they don't need approval of governor. It's already there. You must replace it. If a, a teacher retires or resigns, for whatever reason, you must replace. So we have automatic replacement strategy for our doctors and for our teachers. So we are doing everything, but you must keep pushing because the reality is that we don't, if you go to Aurelia Gege General Hospital today, Lagos has 42 general hospitals. You realize that 40% of them are not from Lagos. So the problem we have is we don't even know the number yeah. that will come. So, um, they are not from Lagos, but you can't turn people back. Yeah. When we did hip replacement surgery in Lasso, we brought Lagosians from all over the world, whatever. About 40% came from Southeast. Are you going to turn them back? No. They can't. So, so we've, we've, we've this uh, beg, let's beg other states also <laughs> to improve so their we'll the we'll the stress of the the Lagos state. state. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll look into, um, you know, you have the themes project. We'll look into education mm -hmm. and see what are the improvements within that area. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. The TVC News at 7 and the TVC News at 10 are not like any other news broadcast. It's the big news hour, the hour for the big breaking stories. We've got some of the best reporters on the field. Taking you through as it happened. It's fast paced, hard hitting. With investigations that matter. Bringing in news that affects your life. 
sports, entertainment, and business news, so you don't miss a thing. Experience resourceful coverage with that ever. On the 25th of February, Nigerians will go to the polls to elect President Muhammadu Buhari's successor, as well as the 109 senators and 360 members of the House of Representatives who will make up the 10th National Assembly. On the 11th of March, 28 out of 36 states will choose their next executive governors, and the 993 members of the state houses of assembly across the country will be decided. With over 93 million registered voters, Nigeria is on course for seven cycles of uninterrupted general elections since the return of democracy in 1999. Join me on TVC News for the countdown to the February 25th national election and March 11th state election for all the updates and analyses you need to know. Every weekday at 6 p.m. It's always a great morning on the TVC Breakfast Show. Thanks for joining us on TVC Breakfast. With the array of stories that matter and what's behind them. As you say, the first blow indicates the direction of government. Tell us what really is going on between uh, your union and the federal government. Once it's generated, you have to don't use it, it's waste. It's... We are not even sure whether we have a strategy for security. Are you saying that there was nothing wrong in that? Was he the one driving the taxi? Answer the question. Reveal your morning with all you need to know. Just mundane lyrics. Yes. How does that fit into uh, your scheme of events or duties right now? No chief of staff, no general has the right to call a governor to order. The governor has been elected by his people. Start your day right because this is the breakfast show that adds to your breakfast. TVC Breakfast, weekdays at 7 a.m., only on TVC News. The National Assembly is a busy place. As the bastion of democracy, it is a place where bills are presented, motions debated, laws made, and the yearnings of the people are laid bare. Come with us as we take you through the workings of the National Assembly. We take you through plenary, committee meetings, and probes, all to ensure smooth working of the democratic process. Doubt and fear doesn't occur at the canvas, it shows in the canvas. It shows the conation of raw earthen material slapped, stroked and molded at a pace provided by the doubt and fear. Every move weigh in the struggle of one to the other, merging the past to the present, brush strokes of colors seen but not known. For when Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still interviewing the Deputy Governor of Lagos State. And Mariam, over to you. Yes, so I am curious about how or what the roles of a Deputy Governor is. And especially a Deputy Governor like you, you know, like you, you are very well versed in Lagos State business, just as well <laughs> as the Governor and everyone that comes here, you know, from Lagos State. And I'm wondering, is there a clash of egos? Or how do you work? Do you work well together? And how does that um, affect, you know, the policies that we eventually have here in Lagos State? Well, we are lucky in Lagos that we don't have any ego or clash. The, the responsibility is so much that you just have to find ways to give different people different advice. Um, so, and, you know, a lot of people might not know, you know, when we were commissioners, the, cl the closest person to me was Governor Sonwolu. At that time, we never knew we'd be governor or whatever. So we've been very close for 15, 16 years. Oh. You know, of all the commissioners, then it was probably the only one that ever visited his house. Mm -hmm. We were close. The family knew each other. We, were, we just became friends. So maybe that made it easier. Yeah. I don't know. But our relationship is solid. We work together. We make you know, every decision that is made, I'm aware of it. So we... We call ourselves at 1 a.m. Omobolua, and then we come, <laughs> we start talk. This is my thinking. This, what are you thinking, and so on and so. On. So we we have no issues. That's why we are able to work together 
Um, I, I really like that. I would like us to go back to um, achievements because really, at the end of the day, Lagosians feel like there's something about this election. There's, this election is giving, giving Nigerians options. Mm. And even in Lagos State, there are options. And I would like you to once again address, we've spoken about health, we've spoken about infrastructure. I would like you to talk about the achievements within the educational sector that you're very proud of. Well, basically, we're building standard schools, uh, meaning instead of the normal chalk, we are now using whiteboards. Ah. Vetland School, for example, is an example. Uh, Elemora School is an example. We are building standardized schools across the state. We're renovating buildings, but that's not the most important. Building is, is good, but buildings don't teach. Mm. What teaches are teachers. Mm. And, of course, the conduct of the students. So, basically, counseling... Counseling is back in our schools, oh. so, so that, you know, we all, we've all been in primary schools. We do stupid things, right? So when we are growing up, we think of various things, we do this. So counseling, guidance and counseling is back in our schools. And, you know, our teachers are extremely important mm. because you can, your furniture will break, mm. windows will break, you can replace them. Our teachers, they stay, children stay in primary school, for example, for six years. Yeah. Our teachers will be there for 30 years, sure. 25 years. So if we don't take good care of them, it, it's a problem. Mm. And that's why for our teachers, we've done massive trainings for our teachers. Because it's, you, you, it's okay for you to have the knowledge, but how do we impact it to a six-year-old six child, mm. a seven-year-old child? So today, a lot of our public schools, a lot of our public schools are better than a lot of public, private schools in Lagos today. Now, the first thing is this. Every teacher in our school is qualified. Sure. So what do I mean? He has certification. He has gone through educational training. So it's not that I have a BS in mathematics. It doesn't mean I can teach it. I might know it, but so there are skills to teach. Have you gotten that skills? Every teacher in public, primary, and secondary school that have that. Now, for our teachers also, we've given all of them the tablets. Oh, yeah. That's that allows... Let me pause you on that tablet note. Um, let's take a call from Yakubu. We've lost about two calls when I'm trying to oh. get your point. So, Yakubu has called me from Dokwemu. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Hello. Hello. We can hear you. You're live. Yeah. Yeah. Good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Uh, good morning to uh, Deputy Governor of the State, of uh, Good morning, uh, sir. First and foremost, sir. Uh, let me begin by thanking you. Like, like governor, like deputy, we, we <laughs> have been lucky in this state. <laughs> Going from our short ball at Mitsunubu to Fashola and uh, Amboy, and then now we have the best spring that can do the Lagos State matter now. And then I would say that let me even thank you, sir, because there was a the time you were with Mr. Yori in, uh, uh, this morning. Meanwhile, I complained that very particular day that was the road from St. Joseph down to number one, that the road was so bad. But as I'm talking to you now, the road has been fixed. I, 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 really, I really need to thank you for that. You, you did well because that day you promised that you are going to look into it and then that they look into it. I said that the cowry, you mentioned cowry. The cowry car that we are using, yes, it has been working. It has tested it. The, 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 the percent has been reduced from the Osho the down to Yano now it's 225 naira. Yes, it has been working. I can testify to that. Yeah, and at the end, you have to do sir. I can tell you for free. Because you made mention earlier that uh, you, you are sanitizing 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 them in order for them not to cause uh, old job and all that. So they are still collecting money on the road. Mm -hmm. If you can be able to look into that for us, I bet we'll be happy. Then, I can also tell you that you made mention of the other party that come to your field, because I was the other party last time. Mm -hmm. If you want to democracy a working system, Sir, we do respect to the other party. I don't need to, do, to, to say something else to them, but you need a thousand lines to demarcate the working okay, system what? like Lagos. Because Lagos is working, working. the citizens of Lagos can testify to that. Even if anybody does not testify to it, here in Dokwemu, I can testify to that because when you want to demarcate a working system, you need a thousand miles. So, if you can see, if they are able to say something on the, on the studio, you see that they were, they were bringing uh, uh, maybe period to 1999 picture. So, 
show the labor state and look at the labor state the way it is. But they forget to show the better part of labor state. We know what we are doing, and then we have already have who we are we are going to for. So that is that. So thank that you so much. Good work is going. And then, is a happy negotiation. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. So, yes. well, well, you were explaining about the tablets. We've heard extensively about yes, how so, that Yes, so every, every teacher has a tablet. Mm. You know, when we were growing up, there is this lesson notes. notes. Mm. And it's a problem in the sense that my lesson note will probably be different from yours. Even though the subject will be the same, the topics will be the same, but the way we customize it will be different. So, the challenge is, it takes them time. So now, the lesson note has been developed. It gets downloaded to the, the, the tablets, and then we can geolocate you as a teacher. Because part of the problem also is absenteeism. Mm. So we can geolocate that, oh, the moment you turn it on, we know, oh, okay, you are at this That's particular fast. school, whatever. So it allows students to actually receive the same lesson from different teachers. And what it does for me, on my laptop, I have all the primary schools in Lagos. So I can check attendance. At any time. Uh, attendance. I can check even the, the, the results. How is it that people in primary 2A are doing well in arithmetic and pupils in 2B are not? Mm. What is the problem? So at least it allows us to understand the challenges that we have and provide solutions to them to say, okay, maybe we need to change this, maybe we need to change that. So we just got in another caller. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, Murray, and um, everybody there on the street. My name is uh, Peter Walaka. I'm calling you from uh, Magudo City. Okay. I want to say hi to Dr. Amzad. Yeah. Good morning. Doctor, I, yeah, Doctor, I want to just um, ask a question, you know. Number one is, um, I want to, I've, I've been, I've not been so happy, you know, see you and Governor so we do campaign because... If we don't need campaign, I am a middle man, see. I am from here, me, say, me, say, me, must say. What is happening in Lagos has never happened in any other state. I have been encouraging other states to borrow from what is going on in Lagos. You don't need campaign. You people have already won. I said you don't need campaign, sir. You know. And secondly, I want to ask uh, Dr. Amzat about Orisha, the place they call Orisha community in Magodo, phase one. The road is bad. Children cannot go to school. Is there anything you can do and make a promise to you on this night nice that you could look into it? Ask the commissioner for what to come to Orisha Magodo in the near United States. Come and see what's going on there. There's no road. There's no, no training system. And secondly, I want to say congratulations to Ashwa He is not in the next president of this country. I am an evil man. I get access to Ashwa Ji's house. It has known anybody. That man is a hero. I, won't, I don't want to say much, but God knows. I'm, saying, I'm not saying anything for anything, but I'm saying that of my heart. And thank you. So the, the, the estate in Magodo, or Nisha. Ma, uh, Ishawu was Ishawu. So Ishawu, Ishawu. they've asked about it to be. I'm hearing Orishe. I'm hearing Ishawu. Right. So I'm sure that if maybe when, um, if you, in the studio, we probably don't hear well, but I'm yeah. sure the person okay. watching... I had the would, share as well. Uh, uh, in Magodo uh, phase one. Phase one, was okay. specific. Okay. Um, let me take you to the okay. presidential election, sir. Um, you worked under the current candidate for APC, Ashiwa Jubolak Metinubu, and there are obvious, like I said, a lot of Nigerians feel like there's options. Um, we have options and we feel displeased with the current administration because of some of the policies carried out. What would you say are the chances of um, Ashwa Jibola Admetinubu winning this election at this point in time? Well, I mean, uh, again, I think Nigerians must look at three things. For me, what have you done? What is your capacity? Mm. And your, what is your network? The network is, how are you able to assemble people across this country? Mm. that can do the job for you. The, the, look, the reality is that if you are a governor or a president, nobody plans to fail. Nobody. There is nobody that says, I will become a governor and go and fail. It is the capability that becomes a problem mm. when you get there. And then the ability to have a vision and stay with it and be bold. So that's why you see that in other parts of the world, let's look at United Kingdom, everywhere that we all say, 
all the prime ministers of UK. Look at the school they went to. Go and check it. Boris, Boris Johnson, Cambridge. Mm. So now, go, so go and look at it. So capability to actually assimilate things is very important. What have you done in terms of your work? So for me, honestly, it's a very easy decision for me. And I'm not biased because I will tell you a story. When I joined this cabinet, I joined this cabinet because it had haunted me. I was working with Morgan Stanley, and they came over there to do mortgages. I was the only black man in the room. And they said, ah, which arms that is yours? What are you doing here? Ah, what were you doing here when you were here too? <laughs> no, so we, we engaged in, and then they were doing Oracle. At that time, at that time, the state of New York have not started Oracle. Hmm. The state of New York started Oracle in 2012. At that time, Nike was doing Oracle. They spent $17 million. We all know Nike. They canceled it. At that time, the success rate of implementing ERP, which Oracle is part of, mm. is 10% globally. Meaning only 10 will start within budget and within time. Lagos State was able to implement it. That's why you don't hear ghost worker. During implementation, we even know of ghost level. Mm. Ghost level. That's why we were able to do that. So automating the process of Lagos. So people say the IGR went up. It didn't just go up. It went up because of automation. Mm. If we are all friends, we can't do the same thing the same way. But technology allows you to automate your process. It allows you to repeat it. It allows you to predict it. That's what it has done in Lagos. So now today, various states are doing the same thing. They, they, they came to Lagos to come and learn. Fine. But so in terms of capability, all of them have been in positions. Uh, Abubakar Atiku has been vice president. Uh, Mr. Obi has been governor. Uh, Ashwaju has been governor. Kokonso has been governor. Let's look at the records. So we shouldn't be sentimental as a people. If not, we will, we will miss it. And I pray we don't miss it. So the question is, what have you done? The governor of Anambra State today, Mr. Soludo, went to the VP to say 40% of my state is under erosion. We all did geography. The erosion start in one day. So which means the people behind did not see the future. But how do you then compare that with somebody that saw a co-Atlantic when Victoria Island will have disappeared? Victoria Island will have disappeared because at the time that they build the, the Tinkan Island, they use three molds. Each mold is about six floors to build that in Canada in 1906. And we never, as a people, went back to take care of it. So erosion. Because when we were in primary school, when we go to Babish, you walk about two kilometers. So the idea of Equatland is to take it back mm. to where its natural cause was. Mm. And that was it. Federal government was pumping sand every year and it's washing away. 1.5 billion it will just go away. Because the ocean will take over. Somebody said, no. What is the problem? They said, the pro okay, in that case, we must cons convert this liability to assets. Mm. What do we need to do? We need to develop, build groins, like they do everywhere. And that was it. So, <laughs> to, so to compare somebody like that, that has the vision to say, when it started Lekki, we were talking about land. When it started the Lekki free trade zone, the MD of, our MD was killed. Yes. by the locals mm. because they didn't want to give the land. We said, look, it's better for you. What are you doing with this land? Now they have 5% stake in that land. Today is the highest industrial place in our country. Today you have the port there. Three times the size of Apapa and Tenka. Three times the size. It's the, the, our port in Nigeria has become a transshipment port because it's not deep. So they will stay in the middle of the ocean and then they were using small to come and carry. Mm. So ships that are supposed to come, discharge within a week, they stay three months. Mm. Wow. So it doesn't make sense for them to come to Nigeria. They were going to Togo, for God's sake. Now, with Lekki Seaport, you can, any ship can come there today. Mm. Somebody has that thought. So mm. how do you compare a lion to a goat? It does, you know, it's, it's scary for me that we... It's even a conversation. That we don't see it. Mm. Because like I said, People have records. Look at their records. 
That's why we ask so that we get reminded. Please, we are... no, let us do. No, so I'm talking to this populace. So look at the records. No, don't let the sentimental. This uh, is a Muslim, there's also is the a bias. Deep. I don't care. There's also... That's between you and your God. What you worship is your business. It's not my business. It's only even God. I've, <laughs> have, have run the lecture and I, I know it's only God that knows if you're a Christian or a Muslim. Mm. It's only God. <laughs> That's because deep. the things that people tell you, <laughs> the people that you think are... So, so let's forget it. Deep. So let's talk about the mm. continuity of this person's relevance in the sense that government after government after government within Lagos State still recognize all that you have talked about. And this has, on the other way, been criticized as Godfatherism. What would you like to say about that? So I recall, I recall during BRF, he, he likes Singapore a lot. Yes. Because yes. Singapore, a nation that has no resources, nothing. They imported, they have an agreement with Indonesia 100 years to import sand. Malaysia 100 years to import water. They have nothing. And they become one of the best countries in the world. So it's knowledge. It's knowledge. Absolute knowledge. Now, we have a population in this country that has been getting PADs all over the world. So what is our problem? What exactly is our problem? It's knowledge. Mm. But we, we keep worrying about something on the ground, oil, this, 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 and we forget our human capacity, which is the most important. So when we went to Singapore, we met Lee Kuan Yew, the BRF. The first question he asked us is, what is your succession plan mm. Mm. as a governor? There is no success without succession. Mm. No success. Because it's easy to destroy anything. Within, you can build a nation for 50 years. In two years, it can be destroyed. Yeah. Wow. And we've seen it around the world. Yeah. Somali used to be a fantastic country. Today, what is it? You can't That's even it. have this conversation. Yes. So the reality is, when people say Godfatherism, look, if somebody has walked a path, and I'm going to walk that path, I better ask. Follow. Mm. I'd, not even to follow, but to say, ah, when you are walking this path, where are the States, problems? Mm. Where, oh. Okay, oh, there is problem here. Don't, you better don't go here. So it's just natural way of living a life. Mm. Ask people that has experience. Even in MBA classes, they tell you, you must have a mentor. Mm. You must have a mentor that will tell you, you can't do this. Oh, this is wrong. Because the problem in our society is sacrifice. Mm. Yeah. So a lot of people will not tell you the truth. So you need that one, two, three people that will say no. That's why Lagos State will have the Governance Advisory Council. These are elderly people. They don't need anything from you. They will tell you, Mr. You are making a big mistake here. You are wrong. So but you, have, you, you convince them, no, I'm not wrong because of ABC. But they will tell you the truth. And they are from different parts okay. of the state. So they will tell you, no, in my own area, this your policy is not working. Mm. So you need that. So the idea to say, ah, as a governor, I'd be told, no, that's nothing like that because you don't know everything. Hmm. So you need people that will also tell you, look, you are making a mistake here. So the idea that, like you said, it was during Ashwaju that we started the Lagos Metropolitan Transport Authority, this Lamata, because they have a master plan to say they designed, at that time, designed seven rail lines the blue, the red, the green, whatever, whatever it is. You know, let, let me, yeah, because people don't want, realize, okay. Um, yes, I would like to say that. Um, you know, having said all that he's done in Lagos State, and everyone is listening to you, what would you be saying to Nigerians now that if we have a Nigeria with Bola Ahmed Ashiwaju Tinubu as president, what would you be getting? Maybe Nigerians should also see that. So the, the truth is this. Um, he's a fighter. So, and he has always fought for the less privileged. And I will tell you, the, remember... When PDP was in government, and he was the only AC governor, there was nothing thrown at him to, to come to PDP. They promised him the whole world. And he said, why? I don't believe in your principles. Now, he's a fighter. When he believes in something, he will do it. And why, why I like him is that, as a commissioner, when we agree on something, it doesn't matter the problem you now confront. It will stay with you. The moment, and, and I, I will tell you a story. When I was a, a young commissioner with him, maybe 18 months or so, we were in his office, three of us, and we were arguing with him. A governor from South South came in, and he said, ah, who are these people? Well, Bola, who are these people? I said, oh, this commissioner for science and tech, this, this, and that. So what is the problem? Let them, 
I know. So that's how we do it in Lagos. Their argument seems to make more sense mm. than my thinking. That's how mm. the man said, okay, we just sat down. We greeted him and we left. And we control. The idea is he listens. Mm. The moment you are able to listen, ideas is not a problem in Nigeria. What I can tell you is that the human capacity of this country will be galvanized if Ashwaju become president. Okay. Listen, Nigerians are making $200 an hour in the U.S. I know Nigerians are doing that. How much is a barrel of oil? Mm. How much? It's whatever, and it keeps rotating. Yes. A barrel, you know, people make $200 an hour, Nigerians, in the IT sector in the U.S. Today, that I know. I know a lot of them. So the reality is, there are enough people out there that can really help this country. How do you bring them in? Not because they know somebody or because they don't know anybody. So that is what Ashiwaju does. He will look for the best brain and let's say, how do we fix this country? Let's sit down. So like I said, when he became governor, he has a master plan. He brought people together, all of them, experts on health. And, the, and that template, all we just need to do is to review it. That's why we do an Inbeti summit mm -hmm. every two, two years. It used to be every year. But we realize that because we make commitments, we must fulfill this commitment. So if they come in a problem to fulfill 80% within a year. So we said, let's do two years. And people come with practical experiences around the world. So we need somebody that can really attack the issue of this country. And that's, that's the man for you. I like the fact that you mentioned that he's a visionary. But one of the concerns of many Nigerians is he's a visionary, but he's also growing to an age where he needs to rest. Okay. How visionary will he be when he gets into position and he needs to be taking rest back to back? And also, uh, you know, Nigeria is bigger than just one state, Lagos State. Absolutely. Yes, we have many issues in the country, many issues across cultures in the country. Now, do you think that even with having a blueprint, on what he intends to do. He will be able to cover the needs of Nigerians across the cultures, across the states, across the local government. Do you think that capacity is still there, considering that he's getting to an age where he needs to rest? Well, I mean, thank you very much. It's a, it's a legitimate question. It's a very nice question. So there are two components to life. So as you also age, you tend to have better experience but less energy mm. as you age. And that is natural. But like I told you, the job of a president, in my view, is easier than the job of a governor, in my view. And I will tell you why. A president has over 600 parastators. Let us look at a country that I just mentioned, Singapore. It's the parastators that get jobs done, not ministries. Mm. And what it does that mean? It has, because they are nimble, they are smaller. So your responsibility as president is, okay, how do I make sure that I have the right people, the right organizations to do this job and monitor? Monitoring today is technology. So like in Lagos, like I said, we have a, 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 a dashboard. So I can monitor the Ministry of Health. All this project you say you are doing, is it being done? Where are we? So remember what president, uh, Vice President Atiku said then that they spent $1.6 billion or whatever, and there was no power. Because there was no monitoring. Mm. By the time they realize it, everywhere is bush. <laughs> and they are, they are, he said that there was no executive council meeting that they held in the last 18 months that they did not give approval on power. But who was monitoring? They meant well, but there is no deployment of technology to monitor that. Okay, you said, oh, you are doing this. Those are the, the governors, the fashionists, the Sawolu that do well is because they have a monitoring model. So Ashiwaju, we have a monitoring model. Now, if you read the Renew Hope, what are the things that is said there? Commodity exchange. How is it that we produce cocoa and we don't determine the price? Oh. We are stupid. I'm sorry. The reality is that our farmers do everything, but when... We cannot negotiate uh, better deals. So, you know, so all these countries don't produce a, a single cocoa and they determine the price for us. Mm -hmm. So let us have a commodity exchange where we, just like stock market, where we determine prices of within Africa. Within, so we started Nigeria first. Mm -hmm. So what that does, it, it gives farmers, it gives farmers more, for more advantage. They know that their product will sell. 
until if you go to Taraba State, I, I served in Gongo, it was Gongola then, Taraba State. Taraba State can produce rice in three months that can feed this country. I can't testify wow. to that. <laughs> no, no, I know. I know. Go read it, you know. You, I, I've been to Mambila. Mambila. It's green all, all through the years. Mm. It's green all through the years. Well, that, so the reality is we have this information. How do you now get it done? Managing. So you need somebody that, first of all, mm -hmm. understand that this is possible. Well, because you whatever, you, whatever you can't see, you can't I'm achieve it. So wow. he's a man that can see that this is possible. So how do we now make farming easier for farmers? What do we need to do? So those are the challenges that Nigeria has. And honestly, in terms of capability and capacity, it is important that we get somebody like him there. Thank like you. you said, the age. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. As in, <laughs> we, I can't believe that we are out of time, time and you have shared so much. Um, thank, you for, thank you for spending your Friday morning with us on your view. And I'm sure that a lot of our um, audience have learned a lot more about this legal state um, administration and what has been done. And more importantly, they've been reminded about the achievements of Ashiwa Jubola Metinubu to understand why you should be voted for. Once again, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having thank me. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. <laughs> all right, that's all we can take on today's show, the last show for the week. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye-bye.